uh, we're learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah. Um, and I'll quick plug. It's not on my website yet. I'll put it up this week. I'm in January. I'm going to teach a few manifestation classes on manifesting for self, manifesting for someone or those you love, and then manifesting for planet. And um, because they're, they're like the same, but a little different. It's like, making a meal for yourself, making a meal for someone you love, or making a meal for a dinner party. <laughs> Which all of you, all, you have all done in the previous life, <laughs> chef life of yours. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so those will only be $25 a class, and each class will be three hours. Um, oh, wow. And then, yeah, yeah, on Zoom. Um, and then you'll be able to review the meditations, like it will be up there forever. Um, so I'm going to check out now while Dahlia, you talk a little bit about your wonderful crystal shop and the distance healing you work, whatever programs you have coming up. You guys, I'm going to leave my body and let the librarians come in and great. share what they want to share. Yes. Yay. All right. Bye. <laughs> So um, while Benita's setting up, yes, I am Dahlia. I also want to throw out to you all, um, we do have an opportunity to answer questions. Um, bearing in mind that this is a, a general group. So, you know, global questions, things like that. So throw them up in the chat and I'll try to get them over to the librarians as I can. Um, but I'm Dahlia Rose. I am a channel and a conduit for healing energy. I teach, I, I assist through the healing process as a mirror as well. Um, so we have um, at my crystal shop in uh, Tacus Mill and Woodbridge, we have over 70 different kinds of crystals, but we're more of a healing center. So um, you can always come by and check us out. And it's mostly good vibes and conversations more than sales. Um, but there, the crystals are there too, if you'd like to, to partake. So that's a little bit about me and we're here excited to see the librarians. Looks like they're coming in. Oh. Hmm. Channeling is all about frequency. And there's different things that can happen to get you in alignment with the actual frequency of what's coming in. Hmm. Everything from sound to movement. Hmm. Yes, we we are we 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 are here. We are flowing. We are flowing. But it is such a pleasing experience for us this time as we have connected with you before our good friend of the crystals <laughs> and as we flow in we are also flowing in in the times past when we have visited you in your crystal shop it was pleasing that you were speaking of your shop it was in your heart and your mind as we entered the conduit for it set a beautiful graph that we were able to cling to in multiple levels of time and physicality that's spreading our energy wider we thank you for providing this platform our friend hmm. well thank you it's an honor to have you back and to reconnect it was beautiful to have you at my center yes yes this is always always a pleasant reunion your energy flows like spring water over the moss covered crystalline infused rocks wow <laughs> thank you that's quite a quite a compliment and an honor thank you for saying that yes your healing frequency has become more potent since the last time we spoke 
Yes, 2020 has made things very clear. <laughs> so a lot of healing work. Thank you for noticing. Yes. And your roots go deeper, which enable you to become a broader vessel. You feel this as well, of course. Yes, indeed. Mm. Very much. Yes. There is a deeper resonance to your being. Thank you. Thank you. There's, it creates a lot to explore. Um, that's really what's kept me going is that that push out and up feels balanced. Yes. Yes, you are becoming more of an earth tone that crystals can then hmm, have a base of support from. Wow. There was a time you were light and airy crystalline energy, a little floaty, but sending down. Now you are more like an ancient oak tree whose roots are wrapped through the stones and you have great energies embedded within you. And as the angelic energy comes in, it has much more to work with. You have a more, hmm, a more profound belly breath. Is oh. this, is this, do you feel this? I do, I do. And it's interesting you speak of oak, because uh, I am very connected to the spirit of oak trees. So, very validating. Wonderful, wonderful. We are very happy and that's yes now we feel completely connected and we wish to speak for a moment about planetary healing as you were discussing with the conduit a moment before how everyone thinks 2020 is a bad year and Things 2021 will be a good year. Of course, years are not good or bad. They are moments in time. It is what you infuse them with that creates your personal prejudices towards desirable or undesirable, correct? Yes. Correct, very much so. Yes. As you know, when you mellow with age and mature, you look back upon unpleasant moments of your past and realize if you had been more mature at that time, you could have made those moments more pleasant or have been less impacted by the unpleasantness around you but you needed to mature before you learned the lesson, correct? Correct, very much. At this moment, you have many humans in your planet in a state of distress, but how much of that distress is truly your distress to own and how much is your resonating with the surrounding distress. These are two things, yes, separate things, very separate. Very interesting. Hmm. Yes. Worth considering. Of course. Now there are some people who of course are in very desperate situations, but many people who are not desperate they feel desperate because they're aware of desperate around them. Mm. Yes, I was talking to someone the other day how that's become the normal and it's hard. There is a, a, a resonance of guilt pervading our, our collective consciousness in thriving within the pandemic right now. Exactly. 
a form of survivor's guilt, correct? Mm -hmm. And that has you start to want to associate in the way that you've described with, with the suffering. Mm -hmm. And there are many who feel victimized even before such victimization becomes an actuality. Mm. You fear, what if, what if, correct? Yes, yes, in an effort to stave it off. A lot of people are doing that, not realizing the connection. Much anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So with this anxiety, you close your mind to the many solutions that just as when you were a child distressed by a situation so embarrassed or or hurt that much later you think i did not need to be so affected like that many years from now you can look back to this moment and realize the opportunities lost because you were so involved with the distress True. Hindsight's twenty twenty. Absolutely. Absolutely. We encourage everyone to examine your anxieties and your fears to see how much needs to actually be gripping within you and how much is the frequency surrounding you, not necessarily the one that must be within you. Look upon your daily lives, determine, is this the daily life by the habit of many years, but perhaps I need to change things because the environment has changed. Ergo, my daily life does not fit, it becomes uncomfortable, and because I'm uncomfortable, I am more easily victimized by the external distress and anxiety. Mm. Does this make sense? It does. It absolutely does. And it is the path of the empath. Absorb all the energy. But conversely, we're supposed to reflect, is it mine? Then push it back out, change it in the process, all of those things. Mm -hmm. We can all agree that 2020 has kicked up a great deal of energy. Absolutely. But we asked to see it. Everybody for 2020 wanted clarity. <laughs> so. We have much. This is not a sleepy year that no. goes by unnoticed. Not at all. So with all this energy, no matter what type of energy it is, it is energy active energy you have within your right the ability to become very still and absorb the energy convert it to your desire okay interesting mm -hmm. does the desire have to associate with the absorption it is energy. You do what you want with it. Mm. Okay. You cool. do not need to be the victim of the energy. You eat the energy or absorb the energy and repurpose it mm. to meet your wishes. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. We guarantee you the energy would rather be a higher frequency. Um, yes, that makes sense. And that's understandable. So we wish to speak a moment through about human history. For many of you see this moment as an isolated situation. Life was going well, and then the COVID hit, and now it's not so good for the planet. But you see much happening on your planet. The global climate change, the revolutions, the all the toxic beings who are rising up, 
the wars, the fighting over money, you know, the unemployment. It is as though once the COVID opened, there was an explosion of distress. Absolutely. Yes. We needed to see it. We did, for this was inevitable, not because it was dictated to be inevitable, but because humanity was on a path that made this inevitable. If humanity had gone to a different path, this would have been inevitable. Oh, okay. You courted the COVID and the COVID responded. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. So why is humanity on this path and how can you change it? Would love to hear that. We invite you to go back in time to the dawn of humanity. Long ago, there were very few humans. You were a very tiny group of subspecies on a planet surrounded by magnificent beasts. Some of you may remember your lives at this time. And others of you, you were invited into our library to learn about this time. It was a time when your planet was in beautiful harmony. Imagine the most wonderful choir with the most magnificent orchestra singing and performing with dancers. That was the energy field of your planet. Mm. Yes, of course, life continued as life. Some animals ate other animals, but all of the mandalas, the grids, the networks were in harmony and the overall level of life grew and thrived until humans came along. Humans stepped away from the global energy grids and became an isolated organization. You wonder wherever humanity migrated to immediately all the other life forms died. Interesting. How could a small handful of puny humans destroy the magnificent, enormous beings that roamed the earth? It was not through hunting for, honestly, an entire tribe of people to take down one great beast. That beast would feed them for quite a while. It, <laughs> You did not go and kill every animal. Sure. It, no, it was the energy. Oh. You brought an energy that disrupted their field. And without their field, first the lighter beings died, the smaller, more delicate, and then again and again and again. The one thing humanity is very skilled at is disrupting the planetary field. Interesting. Yes. You have spent many, many thousands of years disrupting the planetary field. You'll notice where the butterflies and the bees die the planet dies. Yes, we have noticed that. Where the little fishies die, the oceans die. Mm -hmm. The plankton is as necessary as the great sharks, the That's octopuses. Right. Yes. So if you wish to heal your planet, you must return to the harmony of the planetary grids, the energies, the mandalas, and help to heal the energy systems 
so that the animals and the plants and the essences may return to the symphony they once had. Mm. How do we do that? Mm. Awareness. Mm. Awareness and conscious choices. Of course, you understand on a physical level what you must do, the lifestyle choices. But beyond that, for of course, humans were slaying magnificent entire species just with your presence when all you had was a spear and a bit of fur to wear. So the answer is not just in lifestyle. It is most assuredly in healing the mandalas. Okay. Now, may I ask a question? Of course. Uh, Kathleen Burns wants to know how we courted the COVID, as you mentioned earlier. We misspoke slightly. You did not, of course, woo the COVID, but you did enough harm to the planet that such a thing as COVID was inevitable. You did not change your ways. Mm, almost like a, a vibrational match. We, we moved into a frequency that allowed the manifestation of COVID. The COVID occurred because beings of nature were, were harmed to the extent that their energy became rotted, fetid, decayed. And from this, the COVID rose up. Wow. Okay. The destruction of the well-being of the animals. Okay. That's very clear. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is an excellent question. We appreciate your allowing us the opportunity to clarify. Thank you. Yes. Now, of course, each of you has your natural frequency. Our beloved friend here, what is your favorite frequency? Oh. My favorite free, I've never been asked that question, but obviously it's as high as possible. <laughs> yes. But of course you work naturally with the crystals. Oh so yes, that's what you mean. Yes. Uh, but of course as resonant as possible. Yes, I do love crystals, um, mm -hmm. I, but it does oscillate and vacillate, I would say on a daily to weekly basis. Uh, mm -hmm. Current favorite is dragons and goddesses. Mm. then this is a wonderful way at this moment for you to heal the planet. It need not be one thing for a person, but in your heart at this moment, you say, oh, I feel connected with lilacs, or oh, I feel connected with dragons. And with this, you can find your segue to the networks that they work through and send the energy outward. Absolutely. Yes. If one person is working with elephants and another person is working with ocean cleanliness and another person is working with river stones and another person with a flower, it does not matter because you are reconditioning the earth's frequencies mm. okay it may feel like you are not doing so much but imagine if even one quarter of the people on your planet began to harmonize with the natural environment in yeah. one form or another, yes. That would be a complete shift and change. Absolutely. Now you talked about human beings um, sort of disrupting the pattern and that's how um, larger beasts 
they weren't hunted out of existence. It was the disruption that human beings caused. It almost sounds like you're saying um, that the disruptions that can happen can also be for the good, but we just, it was sort of like a kid with a laser. We were sort of shooting it everywhere instead of using our disruptive uh, energy for a positive growth effect and evolution effect. Absolutely, absolutely. Humanity did have and still has the opportunity to be a great guardian species for all the species of your planet. Mm, okay. Yes, through conscious choice and awareness. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. yes. And, hmm, hmm. Imagine a beautiful musical performance with the symphony and the choir, but one person is very loud and singing badly. Yes. This is the effect humanity has on the planet. Okay. Okay. But, of course not all people however if you are singing and you're even singing well but the choir and symphony are singing this song and you are singing well but a different song in a different tempo it is fine but it is still not connected right we encourage all humans to become connected, fully connected with the frequencies of your planet. It requires imagination, mm. receptivity, okay. and faith. All doable things, for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you all have a recommended regimen or like a, a timing? Should this be daily? Should it be weekly or monthly? We would say as much as is comfortably possible. Mm, okay. Of course, the more you practice, the easier it is to flow into it. And you may find that you become more hmm, daily permanently flowing with great ease and no interruption to your daily life. This, of course, will raise your frequency, which will make it easier for your angel and your soul to assist you with manifesting the better things for your life. So you receive as much as you offer to others. Oh, wow. Excellent. Mm -hmm. There are many um, evolved humans of the opinion that to meditate and raise your frequency means you must disattach from earth and rise up to join other dimensional beings. However, this is only because you find the corruption that humans have caused the planet is distasteful for your frequency. Mm. But there is much good energy on your planet. If you as you have become our friend, if you connect with your planet and seek out the good energies, help them to enhance, open yourself up to the angels and the other dimensional friends, invite their energy to flow through you, finding its own way to the resources it wishes to assist. This is much better than just disconnecting and raising up. Sure. And we don't want to spiritually bypass. We don't want to be avoidant. Mm -hmm. We definitely want to dive deeper. So it sounds like you're saying if there is something that bothers us, bothers us, draw closer to it uh, for deeper healing.
inspection and then we can change and transmute the energy through that. Absolutely. If anyone is looking for particular targets to assist, look to the bumbling bees and the butterflies, the insects, for certainly they can use some support. Absolutely, absolutely. And you can look to the oceans. You can look to the great animals of your planet who are still going forward with their best effort to be additional caretakers of your planet. The magnificent beasts who have not given up yet. The elephants. Oh, yes. The dolphins. The manatees the wolves there are many animals on your planet who have continued to be caretakers of the essence of your planet you can become one with them and learn to connect with their energies and help them if you wish to connect with your personal animal spirit guide or any animal totem of choice mm -hmm. they can help you with this absolutely yes and they they give back to not just within the mandala but the the medicine that they let us borrow um so it's it can be an exchange of sorts the wonderful thing of becoming a person of planetary healing is you always receive a great deal in compensation for all you give because you become one with the highest frequencies of love and divine healing absolutely And we know love is the, the, the most pure energy to heal with. It's balanced, usually, when it's unconditional. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. We believe our message is complete. Wonderful. This has been quite a treat. Thank you for uh, reaching in and and connecting with us today. This was truly our pleasure. And we express again our gratitude of the beautiful platform you provided for us. Thank you so much. You mm. keep, uh, these, these compliments are deeply felt and, and I'm very grateful. We wish blessings to you, our friend and to all who join us blessings to all and know that you have the ability each of you to become a conduit for planetary healing each is this another conscious choice that you were mentioning it is opening your heart so that the energy may flow wonderful yes. wonderful Blessings. Thank you. And thank everyone in the comments. I got a couple questions. So hopefully if you need to, you can jump back on the replay and get your answers. And thank you to all the thank yous. <laughs> Welcome back. <sighs> Wow. How are you? I'm, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot having a couple people sharing your body at one time, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's so interesting. They take me out of my body, but, you know, they're a collective. So there's a whole lot of them. Mm -hmm. And while they're in my body, they're also all around my body. 
Oh, okay. And I go out of my body into a point back here. So I can be a part of it, but at the same time, um, I know the experience I have, it's like everything is blue and green. Everything is blue and green. And, um, and I'm not like in any control of anything. So I'm able to observe what they're saying, but at the same time, it's like they're showing me videos and they're like pulling me to different dimensions. And like, it's like every single moment is a whole different experience. And I'm in the frequencies of everything. They really live in multiple dimensions and timelines at once. Kind of like the unicorn in Men in Black. He would jump in and out of uh, oh, yeah. realities and he'd be like, wait, this might be the reality where this happens. Or it could be the reality where this happens. <laughs> um, and I, I can't imagine. He, he looked very anxious and chaotic. Um, <laughs> but then again, that's ADHD, right? Or ADD. We exist in multiple dimensions. That's why we get so distracted. <laughs> it was something when they were showing like the planetary evolution, they showed me like, like as people were spreading around the planet, they were showing like, not just the animals dying, but also how that affected like um, the, the geography and the geomorphology. Oh, and okay how it affected the weather like we've been affecting things since the first time we decided to go traveling well and that makes complete sense because i remember having a conversation with somebody else talking about the weather in this area because it is a melting pot of dc maryland and virginia this is why our weather is wonky because people come from the west or up north or you know in the south and um, they have their ideas of what weather is and what's good and what's bad. And that's why, you know, in all of these rainy and cold days, today it's 60 or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. It's because enough people have shifted the weather patterns. Yeah. Um, and why we have no consistency. I mean, global warming too. But, yeah. Um, yeah. of course, to your point that we've been affecting things in mm -hmm. such great ways for centuries millennia millennia thousands and thousands yeah. and thousands of years yeah and like they also like when i was a little kid here in northern virginia you know we lived in the woods but just like on the border of dc mm -hmm. and we had like a lot of praying manti and stick bugs and leaf bugs and spit bugs like all kinds of insects and it's been like decades since I've seen any of them around here. Well, you should have came to the shop today because there was one stalking my door, praying mantis, and I uh, patiently waited for it to leave. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was like, so oh yes, funny. thank you, sacred being, but also please walk faster. I'm really scared of you. <laughs> you know, there is a um, species from another dimension Mm -hmm. that they were involved with they were among the species multi-dimensional groups involved with the creation of our planet okay and they look like praying mantis, but they're huge they're okay. huge and they look a lot like praying mantis, but they're like so wise and loving and benevolent and um just so pure they're 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 just like all they want to do is help okay yeah i i would probably just be repeating that in my mind all they want to do is help <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i find interesting about uh these manifestations as oftentimes if you're open but there is something that makes you uncomfortable they will often sort of alter their appearance too um so i'm always like i've, I've never ever i had one incident with a spider where it spoke to me and we were both scared other than that, I've been very <laughs> grateful not to have to meet these, uh, you know, helpful legged beings. Like, please just pass me messages through Benita. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. So it's time for all of us to look at our planet, not just 
in the physical, but all the multidimensional and the auric and the grids and the networks and see how much that needs repair. Yeah. Yeah. As absolutely. well. But we are each of us like just look in your heart and say which part of my heart, you know, which part of the planetary energy stream do I want to work with now? And often they'll show up, right? Like you'll mm -hmm. you'll be aligned with something. I like to talk about um, the when we heal. A lot of people say, you know, I want to go out. I want to help people. I want to do this. I want to do that. And those are beautiful things. But also that internal work, when we do it, when we heal, it gets sent up into the collective consciousness. And then hopefully you and a few other people around the planet are all going through that healing experience together. And then it shatters something in the collective field and and healing starts to disperse outward. So more people feel strong about you know, whatever they're working on and, and things of that nature. So to your point of the mandala, like when you say that, I always vision, um, you know, a chain reaction in one area setting off another and then one mm -hmm. after the other. And it's, you know, you don't have to worry about, oh, did I get all the lines? No, mm -hmm. you don't, <laughs> you're not supposed to. Other people will get, you know, tapped and then they'll do their work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think if we, uh, I mean, all it really is, is just like, you know, they, the librarians have been teaching us on the Wednesday nights about healing inner and outer, but like, because they say you can only heal to the frequency you can carry within you. Absolutely. So, yeah. So the, if you want to heal the plant, the first thing is to make sure you are really appreciating yourself yeah you know, gratitude gratitude to self and releasing yeah and shadow work and and all mm -hmm. the other stuff <laughs> yeah and i like that there's no ceiling to that you know you can heal to the frequency at which you're at but you can always go higher mm -hmm. you know the minute you get comfortable do something else <laughs> yeah. yeah um so this was awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank yes, you. This and was wonderful. Yeah. Um, and I'll try to go through the comments later. And, um, you know, the librarians are going to be hanging out with me for a while. <laughs> so, well, thank I'll, them I'll for their dictate to me. Thank them for their presence and their lovely words. They were so complimentary. Oh my God, Dahlia, they showed me when they were coming in and they were like pulling me out. They showed me like, suddenly we're in your wellness center. Oh. And like every time that they have ever channeled through me at your place. And also like when I've channeled others, they were there to provide support. So like when Jesus came, and when like uh, Gaia and Mary and Mary came and was it the Lemurians and the Palladians, yeah. oh, they were, the Akashic librarians were always there. So it's like, they pulled all of those experiences. Wow. Every, and it was like, um, it was like uh, if you're setting up a multi-sided tent and each of those experiences was a different post. And then it was like, and we were in this grid together. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And you were like, you too, you and me, like, it was like, we were in the middle of this beautiful grid and the librarians were all around us with you and me right there. And I was literally experiencing every one of those moments at the same time. Well, that makes sense for the the way they were describing getting more connected for sure yeah that was really cool it was that was a new one for me <laughs> oh <laughs> well, that was awesome yeah okay well thank you all so much for joining us yes. and um i'll put in the comments i'll put a link to the wednesday night group if you want to join us and dahlia if you have any upcoming events also um you know you can put in the comment section and... sounds great and feel free to reach out to me if you uh want to talk more or have questions yes
I'll tell you guys, I love Delia and the librarians <laughs> love her. Jesus oh. loves her. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Jesus go way back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you all, everyone. Have a wonderful day.